direct from the six, world-renowned, Canada's largest city, with Canada's biggest thinkers, visionaries, and hustlers. This is Startup Talk, featuring the founders, funders, innovators, and community leaders who've led Canada's startup ecosystem right here in Toronto. You'll hear the challenges, the failures, the successes. Toronto's Startup Podcast gives you the full story direct from the entrepreneurs and influencers who've made a difference. Now, the host of Startup Talk, the founder of Toronto Starts, the Startup Coach. Speaking of brand awareness, many publicists feel you should be using PR early on. When is a good time for startups to invest in public relations? Should you have some traction first or can PR help build traction or brand awareness? Can I jump in this? Sure. So one of the com- early companies that I worked with was Solaris Disinfection. Um, it was actually initially a family cleaning company. That was a family-based company. This is before COVID. And uh, one of the things that they struggled with was they're already in commercial. Um, their fa- family company was already in all the commercial companies, but they wanted to get in hospitals, specifically hospitals in U.S., because what had happened was in Canada, because we're a public healthcare system, no one was really ready to invest in UV disinfection. Now UV disinfection is very hot, but this is before COVID. Keep that in mind. Um, and at that time, the only thing that really helped was actually doing PR and then pulling some articles and then sharing that with these uh, companies in US and saying, hey, look, we got featured in this, we got featured in that. That was the only way that we could get their attention to get a, a meeting in the first place with the mm. distributors. So I think it really depends on like which market you're trying to enter. And if you want, you know, it's not just for, because before people used to do PR for like, oh, you know, as featured in Forbes or something like that. But for a company like this, where they're trying to get into a very like, you know, or much more barriers and like how to do it and all that, like for them, that was a great way to do it. And we did it just by like going on, (laughs) doing it very grunt work. Like, you know, we had the VAs go in get the edit, like different, um, different article writers and just, you know, people who wrote about cleaning, who wrote about hospital cleaning, envir- environmental cleaning, and then literally just outreach to them and pitch them an idea and, um, you know, shared a little video and all that. It was very much a grunt, grunt work. So it can be done without investing like in a whole agency. But I thought that's something that I just wanted to quickly share because it just popped up in my head. And it's very related to a Canadian company trying to get into US. Daniel? Yeah, I think... You need to be careful when it comes to spending money on PR early on, because it is a slow build, right? There's that time of pitching and preparing. And even if you do spend time pitching to the right people and they do check out your current website, your current social, your current traction, if they don't see something there that's quote unquote newsworthy, you wasted that time, you know, and money reaching out to them. So I would recommend, of course, uh, keeping PR as something that you want to consider, especially if it's a consumer, uh, consumer friendly product, right? Where you need to reach the masses, but PR isn't going to help you if you have a very niche product, right? A very niche service, you're better off getting featured or contributing an article to some niche industry publication, let's say, than, you know, being on, I don't know, Toronto star or on Golden mail or something. Yeah. I mean, I think to Daniel's point. You know, PR is a very hard game to play, and it can be very expensive if you hire an agency. And it's not something I would recommend recommend for early stage companies. And it's hard to break through. The media landscape has shrunk. Uh, the number of companies battling for attention has grown. So there's a, there's a supply and demand issue here, and you've got to have a good story to tell. Now, the easiest story for startups to tell is when they raise money, because it's a benchmark they can wave the flag. But like I'm working with a client right now, and their sales are super hot. They are selling like hotcakes. It's amazing. They have an AI product that just meets the pain point. But I'm hesitant about doing PR right now because they don't have a story to tell. Simply saying our product is really popular. People want to buy it is not a story because the media reporters are looking for stories, whether they're the stories are really positive or different or bad. But unless you got a good story to tell um, and you got a budget, I would stay away from hiring an agency, at least, at least until you've got more momentum. So my perspective on that is actually slightly different in the fact that there's many, there's many different ways to do PR. It's not always just about dealing with the media. 
that is one part of it, but there's a whole world of peer opportunities within the influencer marketplace that a lot of people tend to sleep on, especially when it comes to B2C product products. B2B, not so much because the it's not too many businesses buy something because an influencer s- suggested it, but for the consumer products, that actually can be very, very lucrative for you when you're talking about influencers and, and aligning yourself with the right influencer. I mean, you think about just the fact of, you know, you guys know, I'm probably old enough to remember Oprah Winfrey and her, her favorite things. You get your product on her favorite things list and you are pretty much set, right? And she's not necessarily a media outlet. I mean, well, actually she maybe is, but I mean, but you understand the point that I'm trying to make here. Like it's sometimes getting with the right influences and the right opportunities, that can be part of your whole PR uh, strategy as well. So it's not just about trying to get into the news articles. And I take a step back and say, when you say invest in public relations, there's two things you can invest, time and money. And as an early stage startup, you can invest time more readily than you can invest money. And mm-hmm. if you want to take a look at some of the things you can do to, to get PR for yourself by investing time, go take a look at Emily O'Brien and Comeback Snacks and everything that she does. Donating at holiday season, going up to hospitals or homeless shelters, and the media just shows up, right? You do the mm-hmm. things where they're writing stories about you. It has nothing to do with your product or service or whatever, and it's just your time and getting out there and being public about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But she does amazing things and gets on the paper and the news and the podcast and on interviews everywhere. Just follow her and you'll see all the stuff and you'll get all sorts of ideas. Final words over to you, Mark. And where can people find you, contact you, reach out for you to find out more? Uh, LinkedIn for sure. Uh, Write a lot of content on LinkedIn. I guess that's going to drive my SEO if uh, Niemas... uh, words are, are on the ball. Uh, just look for Mark Evans or Mark Evans Fractional CMO. And my website is marketingspark.co. And do you have any events coming up that you want to talk about? I should. I should be doing better marketing myself. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, <laughs> I just yeah. didn't want to forget anything. No, no, that's it. That's it for now. Naima? Uh, that's funny, Mark. Um, you, you know, by you being present here, that you, that's marketing enough. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Greg, for that. That's you're my event. You're my event. My event coordinator. Fabulous. I also find that when I first popped in here, I saw that um, uh, you know Mark had his name, but also his company name on the bottom. So I really like that. So I went back and you know did that. So he 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 knows what he's doing there. Um, for me, I would say my last words would be just thank you for having me here, Craig. Um, you know, Craig mentioned his events. I honestly love 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 startup uh, events um, and. I would say that you can find me at the next one that's happening this Thursday. So if you come, uh, come there, I'll be there. And of course, uh, you can search up my name, Social Sherpa on YouTube. And if you feel so kind, uh, or if you just want to learn more about social selling, you'll see a playlist there that teaches you every single step of social selling. So if that's something that you want to use for bootstrap marketing, it's there. So again, uh, YouTube, Social Sherpa. Yeah, stop playing on social and start selling. Mm. Trevor? Oh, well, I'm glad that I actually did to, was able to finally get through to this. I got to figure out what's going on with my computer. But um, I have, I'm really happy that uh, we were able to do this. I have a sales strategy workshop coming up next week with you, Craig, actually. Absolutely. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, and you can find me at marketinggenioushq.ca. Um, that's pretty much about it for me. I mean, the biggest the one takeaway that i have for everybody who's listening figure out who it is you want to talk to because once you figure that out then you can figure out about the best messaging that's going to work for them fantastic and danielle important one for sure uh i i will add to that if you're speaking to everyone you're resonating with no one so that's important (laughs) um Uh, I have a series of workshops coming up that are more so for social purpose uh, businesses um, and organizations. So I have one, I have a few coming up uh, basically every Monday. So you can check that out. My page is called The Good Growth Company. Um, We have a free series uh, online, different topics. And uh, yeah, like I said, um, content that actually 
speaks to your audience, but then has a purpose. Don't just put out content for the sake of it. Um, think of the intention behind all of your content as a as a startup, but try to invest in your own personal brand because thought leadership, uh, you, you can't ignore it. A lot of people don't like to put their self out there, but if you're a founder, invest in your own content, not just your startup's content. So that's, that's where I'll uh, leave you all tonight. Thank you for having us, uh, Craig. That's great advice. When we did the investor session last week, we had Graham Barlow on and he suggested that when you start, start building your personal brand first, market everything as your personal brand, because if you sell or leave the company, you still have that personal brand rather than um, having to start from scratch again. So great advice, Daniel. All right, torontostarts.com for everything else that we do. Startupdrinksto.com for startup investor drinks. All those links will be uh, wherever you're watching this in the show notes or in the podcast and links to everyone here is LinkedIn and whatever links they're going to send me tonight or tomorrow morning, I will include in all the show notes. What I'm going to do, thank you everyone for attending. I'm going to break this up into several sessions for the podcast um, and a, a few different videos as well as one big long video that'll go on our YouTube channel and I'll send everyone the links for that. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you. Thanks everyone for watching. This has been great and we'll talk to you all soon. This has been Startup Talk, Toronto's startup podcast. For more exclusive content, the episode vault, and to be part of Toronto Starts community, visit torontostarts.com. Get your name on the newsletter mailing list and check out our upcoming events. For more episodes, subscribe now. And please recognize the time and work behind the scenes put into connecting you with the biggest visionaries, entrepreneurs, and innovators in Toronto by leaving a five-star review. Join us for more next episode from Toronto's most active entrepreneur and startup community on Startup Talk.